to me, the scariest person is not the person who is insane, but the person who is insane and yet does not understand it. That is uh, the problem for Abel Turner, played by Samuel L. Jackson in the movie Lakeview Terrace, directed by Neil Butte. Abel is a bitter racist, and when uh, uh, Chris and Lisa Matson, an interracial couple, move into the house next door, he is viciously opposed to their union. And when he catches them breaking in the new pool, he turns absolutely hostile. Being the Brooklyn liberals that they are, they try to find a, an amicable solution to the rift that has come between them. But Abel is a very, very sick man. And he know, but he's also very smart. And he's able, he knows just how to twist their buttons. And soon, and, um, soon the conflict between the interracial couple and the black police officer has turned into all out war. You know, this movie, um, this is a movie that is very difficult to watch. I imagine that a lot of people will either walk out or just turn it off halfway through or will be glued to the screen and yet just be sure that they just hate this movie. And that's my design. This movie uh, makes us, you know, ask questions about ourselves that we feel, that we will probably feel very uncomfortable answering about racism and the prejudices we have between ourselves. And I really like that aspect of it. It's challenging, it's suspenseful, it's scary. Uh, on a physical level, it's not especially violent. Psychologically, it's brutal. And that's because the performances by, especially Samuel L. Jackson, who has never been creepier, uh, Patrick Wilson and Kerry Washington are so good. And this is basically, this is almost like a stranger within thriller, but at the same time, it's a psychological, it's a story of psychological warfare between a bitter racist and two people who are not angry by nature, but are being forced to grow a backbone in ways that they would rather not do. And I find that fascinating. Um, I think it's a really good movie. It is not for everyone, and it is going. It is not an easy film to watch or review, but it's a good film. I give it three out of four. Yeah, uh, I really like this film. It's probably um, one of the few thrillers of. I mean, it's it's a desk. It's a decade old, but I was just, but still a decade that it actually stuck with me in my yeah. memory because it's. They're so most of them aren't well done, and then we yeah. have the real issues that this right. film deals with. And it's highly interesting to me that this came out, uh, you know, two thousand and eight, and just a few years before all these uh, this Black Lives Matter issues with both race and, and police, right? Um, accountability to put in a fair stance, you know, neutral stance, um, came came to the forefront because uh, I don't know if you mentioned, but uh, Samuel Jackson's character Abel is a police officer. Yes, so that whole adds a whole other element. Right. To the racism. Yeah, exactly. How can you... Who do you call when the police officer next door is a psychopath? I mean, not to interrupt you, but what's really scary about this movie is that Abel is... He's a sick man. He's not just some garden variety movie psychopath. I mean, he's really sick well, mentally. Well, you know, I guess I looked at it... I looked at his character... Slightly more sympathetic. I feel like the, the, the story, exactly. Yeah, I feel like the story wanted to because the story gives you reasons for his having his racist feelings. That, that doesn't excuse them by no. any means. And then eventually he moves into doing things that are uh, inex, inexcusable beyond even the beyond right. the racism. They're just terrible. So, but I feel like um, so. Let me get to for me. It, it, for me, it's a three out th stars out of four. Yeah. Um, I feel like I would have been much higher, except for the ending, which I felt like was almost like a tack eye thriller ending. Right. I really would have loved this to have fallen a little more on the drama side. Right. With how things were res resolved in some fashion. Right. Yeah. To have that that last ten to fifteen minutes. Yeah. You know, which could have been any typical thriller. Exactly. Kind yeah. Of ending. 
Um, but again, there, it, it's tense. It has even it even has a little something to say about re- retaliation, exactly. And, and, you know, and how that you know isn't isn't healthy, and how that leads us down a bad right. place. And that's kind of what I felt like when you know I felt like it, it was getting to the point where Abel's um, led by his racism, his actions were putting his back up against the wall to make right. him do. You know, exactly. worst, worst things. So I look at it a little more sympathetic than he was just like an evil psychopath. No, he wasn't. He, I think he was just really, really sick. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so, well, psychopath, I, you know, thinking like he has no no feeling yeah, yeah, or yeah, yeah, right yeah. or wrong. I feel like he did. It, it, this is, it, he's closer to um, Alex Force and Fatal Attraction than, uh, say, you know, any like mad slasher movie. This isn't a slasher movie, right. but you know what I mean. Right, right, yeah, yeah. There, what I'm trying to say is, there, there's layers here. Right, there is, and it makes us ask. It makes you know the characters ask questions about themselves, like it makes us ask, like, why do they? Why are they saying the things that they're saying? You know, like for example, uh, why doesn't you know Chris want to start a family immediately with the uh, uh, his wife, or you know, is he really in love with her, or? Do you do it because you, to start going for the team or to be politically correct? Or so, those questions, they're, obviously, they're very loaded questions, but it, it asks them. And it makes us ask them ourselves. What do we feel? How do we feel about this? What do we think their answers are? And what is the right thing to do in this situation? Right. The, um, the one problem I had with the film, the ending, I, I thought it was kind of clever, but I think. It was a huge mistake for Neil Butte to include a motive for uh, Abel Turner's, you know, you know, racism and violence. Um, I'm not going to give it away, but I I think it ruins a lot of the mystique by giving them motiv- motivation. It, it turns this, it, it, it causes you know his film to kind of. Move away from the most provocative material. He, he gives he, he gives a subject with no easy answers an easy answer, and I think that's a mistake. Uh, it does tie into the kind of a clever t- twist into the ending, but you know I I think this would have had a lot more power had it you know, had he been without motive, you know, had he been just some sort of you know, enigma, just basically there to challenge their, you know, Chris and Lisa's beliefs about themselves and each other. Right. And, uh, you know, Samuel L. Jackson, he, he's he's one of the most you know, ubiquitous stars in the world. For good reason, he's one hell of an actor. I've never seen him give a bad performance. Even in, like, really crap movies. Uh, let's just hope he doesn't do a movie for Wes Anderson. <laughs> but, um... Uh, he's very, very good. This is one of his, this is his best performance in Full Fiction. And uh, uh, Patrick Wilson, who normally plays the, kind of like vanilla, you know, individuals, he is the perfect choice for Chris because this guy, you know, you can't imagine, you know, like uh, Patrick Wilson is some, some sort of you know, Death Wish remake. I mean, he doesn't have a mean bone in his body. By using that, he gives the character more you know, depth and believability, and I really like that. And Carrie Washington, she's meant to be on an even playing field with you know Wilson and Jackson, and she's a good actress, and you know she's up to the task. It's just the script, the script you know, is kind of underwritten in respect to her character. But I like the movie, and I give it a three. Yeah, you, you know what you're saying there with you know, I think I mentioned. I liked the backstory that was given for Samuel Jackson, but I do agree with you on this, that the film tried to be too even-handed with the drama and the right. film aspect. It could have been a much stronger film, possibly yeah. a four-star film, had it gone one way or right. the other. Because even with that conclusion, it's almost like they, like you can right. see how even-handed right. they wanted things to be. Exactly. And like I said, that just that just takes the wind out of the sails a little bit on what was otherwise a really intriguing premise. And right. mostly well executed. Um, so this movie, this I, I just wanted to reiterate it again. This movie is going, it is not for everyone. It is going to turn off a lot of people. 
it is going to cause great discomfort, and it is not a pleasant experience, pleasant movie to watch. Okay. Because Neil LeBeau, he makes movies that acts that you know uh, make us ask you know uncomfortable questions about ourselves, and I find that you know exhilarating, but a lot of people just won't like that, and uh, so I just want to give that kind of fair warning. Okay. Yeah. Um, and- Let's see Samuel Jackson in some more scary roles. Yes, exactly. He was scary in Pulp Fiction. Yeah, in a way, in a way as much as that yeah. would allow for. But you know, um, and, and in this film, I would like to see him. In, yeah, exactly. In, is, a, is a yeah is a yeah. villain. So it's a good movie, but it it's not for everyone. Okay. All right, 